Our following speakers has over 25 years of experience in the networking and security industry, having worked for major organizations covering technologies from networking, computing, and security. He'll be speaking to us about new and emerging security solutions, the cybersecurity landscape, and defense strategies. Please welcome Brett Lai, the VP and CTO of Technical Sales, A10 Networks. Hi, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Pleasure to be here today and to see such a varied number of organizations at this key international security event, both from the industries, key customers of A10 Networks today and future, across the verticals, and in conjunction with our key partners. Today, I really want to touch on the cybersecurity landscape and a number of the defense strategies that we're seeing in this fast-moving and evolving world. So if we look at the threats and the security landscape today, it doesn't matter where you look in the organization and how users are evolving, application usage is evolving. Where is data today? The data is in your data center, it's in the cloud, it's on your device. And so a consistent security posture across all your devices and applications is critical. However, with this exploding usage of data and where data is accessed from, we're seeing more cyber attacks than ever before. If you look at the number of data breaches in 2022 here, some of the key ones, these are affecting hundreds of millions of accounts tens and hundreds of millions of users and application usage across there. We've heard a lot from the, the uh, organizations speaking today about AI, ChatGPT, for example, and the advancements of AI and how that's been used positively for good, but also how it can be exploited for bad and how malicious code can be used to be written much faster, much more speedily than it has in the past for these types of attacks. So if we look at the number of attacks, the impact of those, there's the volume is increasing faster than ever before. The sophistication is higher than it's ever been. And the, obviously the impact is absolutely critical in terms of the impact is growing exponentially. So we need a defensive strategy to deal with that. And to put that into context in terms of commercials, only eight years ago, the cost of cybercrime globally sat around $3 trillion. And this is cybersecurity ventures analysis. And so you can look at this key research, look at the cost of these um, exploits, these attacks. Now, from 2015 through to where we are now, we're around seven or eight trillion dollars of cost impact to business today. That's cost of business, productivity, exploitation from these uh, more sophisticated attacks, whether it's e-crime uh, attacks, whether it's nation state attacks, this is a huge impact and it's on the rise predicted to be around $10.5 trillion by 25. So how do all of us in the room get smarter around dealing with these types of attacks and also mitigating the cost impact so we can start to turn that cost into good productive technology implementation? If you look at Microsoft's digital defense report on 2022, look back, the number of distributed denial of service for higher services. Microsoft mitigated around 2,000 attacks a day. A day. 2,000 attacks of DDoS per day, which is up 40% annually. So this is growing exponentially um, from, from the types of attacks and the volumes of attacks. And this translates into 
you know, multi-terabit DDoS attacks into large-scale data centers. And so if you think of the biggest cloud providers, you know, those organizations are dealing with multi-terabit distributed denial of service volumetric attacks. And that's what they need to protect against. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through uh, this, uh, this presentation today. But if you look at the different types of attacks, it's kind of interesting because the different types of attacks that are occurring today are both denial of service and distributed denial of service. And about 40% of attacks are some kind of DDoS attack or DDoS originated in terms of how they start. So that's the DDoS, the volumetric, the penetration into the actual environment. And then once you're into the environment, it's about going undercover. It's about how do I then get into the environment and progress through that environment through basic web application attacks. That's where we see the increase occurring. These are very small in size, very um, impactful in terms of the application impact through these low level, low volume uh, and size of attacks. And they work their way through the infrastructure accordingly to get access to the more, um, the more uh, fruitful and uh, expensive sort of uh, information from there. So if you couple denial of service, high volumetric with low level basic web application impact attacks, you've got a lot of going on inside the environment to protect against. And it's about how do we learn about these different types of attacks proactively and use AI and ML, based on ML, then using AI to proactively and intelligently protect against those types of attacks. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the presentation. But if you look at what you have to deal with today, all of these different types of attacks, look at the scale of cyber operations. How can we provide more intelligent tooling but more importantly, collapse that, all of those feeds into a single source of truth. How do you get to that point of observability, insights, to then learn proactively what's really happening, present that, and protect against it through these common techniques, to get away from the immense manual labor-intensive operations that are slower, um, more challenging to deal with, highly costly, and prone to a lot of um, insertion points through the human interaction with tool sprawl and all of the challenges of managing multiple tools and, and insights. And so if you look at the, the scale of these types of challenges for any customer that we've been talking to, you know, we've got customers Obviously, you have your on-premise data center environment. You're consuming SaaS-based applications. You're running applications in either a public cloud or a data sovereign cloud. And so with those types of applications, you know, AWS is pushing 7 million code, uh, code iterations a day. So different code 7 million times per day. You know, in, in, and that's iterated across, across a week. In one week, Microsoft will block you know, 14,000 attacks. You know, and we're starting to talk about the volume of attacks in a single week. You know, Twitter, now X, obviously rebranded to X, will serve 3 billion tweets. 3 billion tweets in one week. You, know, you think about where all of that information is going. And LeaseWeb, you know, a European customer of, uh, of A10, you know, blocks over 2,000 attacks a week. And these are the sorts of customers and volumes that we're dealing with. And so if we look at the environment, it used to be relatively, let's say, straightforward. You have a single data center, you have your applications running inside that data center, and you're able to protect with a security in depth architecture through that data center environment. Of course, today we know your environment is much more complex. It's the data center, 
It's the uh, environment that you have both private cloud, but it's also about your geographic span. It's about your H quarters, your branch networks, how they're utilized today, the services in which they're operating, and then the applications with modern agile application development, you know, code and chunks of code or containerization of microservices allows you to push smaller components of key services of given applications much further to the edge of the environment. And so that edge computing build. So the environment, as well as pushing applications into a public cloud provider and consuming SaaS services, is much more complicated than it's ever been. And this is where the power of you know, AI and these advanced technologies can come into play to look at these more sophisticated attacks across your infrastructure. And so from the data center in terms of DDoS protection on the wide area links in, that's your volumetric attack piece. Around you know, IPv4 infrastructure protection and network address translation, and then a coupling L4 to L7 security services alongside that to make sure that we're securing those large environments. And then being able to look at application usage. Every time you go to a website and application, HTTPS turns up, SSL to that application. So how do you scale SSL, de-encryption, inspection, looking at not just the inspection, but then doing some triage on mal behavior and ill-looking code and connection types, and then being able to repackage that and send that on at a huge scale, huge speed, or deal something with it in terms of remediation. Scaling also, you know, infrastructure through to L4, L7. You know, somebody what said to me, is IPsec dead? You know, and I was like, I looked back and I thought about it. I thought, IPsec dead? No chance. You know, IPsec is the foundational uh, security infrastructure um, standard and is used at large scale in the infrastructure today. But coupling that with uh, more... Um, uh, less, uh, less uh, intensive security techniques as you move forward, you know, over and above that site-to-site -site IP VPNs and those sort of security technologies, moving that and coupling that with what we see between the infrastructure and L4, L7. And it's also about how do we look at inspecting and gaining insights around application and user behavior to look at what's good and what's bad. So in terms of solutions, if we look at the solutions overall, I know we've got a number of enterprise customers here today, a number of A10 customers. Um, if you look at your environment today, we have a reference architecture. I'm not going to talk too much more into that today. I think Fatty did a um, very good job earlier in terms of secure application access in the technology breakout. We've got a number of technical experts on, on the stand uh, on the A10 stand to look at holistically how do you create the security services across your environments and create a single security posture that's consistent whether, wherever your application is housed and where the data is delivered to. And that's critically important as we move forward. And so the key number of services that as you move those applications are critical to maintaining your security posture, but more importantly, your control of the application, your ability to move it somewhere and move it back and maintain all of your security end-to-end. -end. And then also as a service provider, again, a number of our key customers are here and a number of key service providers. It's great to see you all here today. It's a, a very productive morning already. I know we're already in the afternoon. Again, as service providers look to move from the physical world to software to virtual, and then from IPv4 to IPv6, that journey from physical to virtual to containerized services as the scale of user subscribers in the advent and, and um, deployment of 5G, as an example, 
and then the movement from IPv4 to IPv6 in parallel to that physical, virtual, and containerized journey. There's a lot of architectural shifts that are occurring as the applications are used in different ways over 5G networks, and the volume of subscribers is increasing in terms of how they're using those applications. And so having the right security that threads throughout physical, virtual, and containerized is absolutely critical. And to learn more about that, again, come and see us and the technical expert teams on the stand. But I think what's a key area right now is around what is happening from a threat perspective. What is happening in terms of the attacks that are occurring? You know, I went to see a customer in a country last month, and we went in, and unfortunately, this customer was experiencing a um, security attack, a denial of service attack. And we're able to bring up a threat intelligence service that we have where we could look at and see what the attack was, where it was hitting, and the impact it was having so we could remediate against it. It was extremely valuable to that customer, and um, it was uh, unfortunate that it was occurring as we went to this uh, senior customer meeting. But the impact is then not only the impact of the threat intelligence feeds and services when an attack happens, the real value to that customer now is how they can use the threat intelligence feeds proactively before an attack happens. And so we've seen coordinated attacks for across all verticals, and we see that growing. But our reserved attacks from our own threat intelligence service that we have you know, looks at the volume the location and the type of attacks that are occurring. So we know the volume, we know the attack, we know where it's occurring, and we know how to remediate against it. All of these behaviors that are going on and these types of attacks built into the learning of our engine and our learning of how do we proactively protect against it. Look how it shifts in terms of the location and volume into from one day to seven days to 30 days to 90 days. And there's some big groupings of attacks in those areas. So the volume and the grouping and the intelligence. That's what threat intelligence feeds should be giving you. And we've got a SaaS-based service around our A10 Defend environment that looks at the DDoS threat intelligence, it looks at what those intelligence feeds are, where the attacks are occurring, what type of attacks. It's proactive, it, it monitors, it looks at the impact, it looks at where it's coming from and the impact it's having, and it proactively deals with that for you by alerting you into your socks and taking remediation. It's absolutely tailored per customer in terms of the service, and it's very actionable in terms of actionable insights. So looking at that as a service and how that intelligence comes into your environment is absolutely key. It also can be used as a, a managed service offering in terms of how do you build that up and offer that into uh, vertical markets, specific customers, and managed services, and looks at the insights into those sources that are occurring and be able to proactively remediate against them. The way in which it's doing that is through AI automated based protection. So it's using the ML gathering of the behavior. It's then using AI techniques to automate the protection based on the ML behavioral based analysis. So it's comprehensive in terms of how that starts to strengthen your environments more end to end as these attacks get more sophisticated, they change in nature, and they also uh, gain more volume in terms of the damage that they can potentially have on your own environments. So it's all about how do we take proactive, tailored action in your environment, real time, as we see the threat intelligence feeds, and proactively to protect your infrastructure and your environment against them as they occur 
in other areas before they come and hit either the country, the region, or your own infrastructure directly. And finally, around this threat intelligence environment, I think it's important to understand the threat intelligence and insights that are gained. How do we create those early warnings and uh, volumes of early warnings, sensors of, of information, and build those attack advisories and proactively push them out to the environment and to your key, key customers, uh, serve, um, security, sorry, security operations center staff. You know, so how do we use those techniques? Yes, we have IP block lists, and we can look at what, it, what is already blocked, and we can add to that. But the way in which we feed is through the underlying behavioral-based techniques and AI uh, proactive distribution. We have an annual weapons report that looks at the DDoS weapons, how many millions and tens of millions of weapons that are out there, where they are, the types of attacks that they're generating, and we an analyze each and every one of those attacks and create a weapons-based a weapons uh, report and infrastructure. It's about knowing your attacker and what they're going to do to your environment to protect against it. We do the DDoS malware analysis on that, that environment, and that's key to couple those two together. Looking at the attacker, looking at the attack analysis, but also looking at the actual analysis of the malware that already exists uh, that's coming through. And then we use our underlying technology uh, around AI and ML-based uh, global infrastructure that's a honeypot and scanning for these types of attacks to lure people in, uh, understand the attacks more detailed, proactively, and push, push those out. So that's really around threat intelligence. That's what's key in the environment today, is about how do you move from reactive, fixed type of security infrastructure to intelligent, proactive, tailored environment that can act real time and with speed uh, in threat intelligence to your actual environment. So with that, I'll leave you uh, to enjoy the rest of the afternoon. I look forward to seeing you on the A10 stand. Remember, A10, always secure and always available. Thank you very much for your time today.